It's a packed house this afternoon as Chester City are looking for a place in the third round of the FA Cup. Standing in their way, the Nottingham Forest, the twice European Cup champions. Chester will be hoping to progress further though at the expense of the former Premiership side. It's going to be a really tough challenge though for the Blues. Marcus Richardson is taking his place up front. Chris McKenzie will be desperately hoping to do well in goal this afternoon. But plenty of problems being posed for Chester. Amongst those is goalkeeper Paul Gerrard, the former Everton and England under-21 player, and David Johnson, who is returning to the side following a back injury. He'll be hoping to uh, get his name on the score sheet here at the Diva. Team news for Chester City, though. Michael Branch misses out due to knee ligament damage, which he sustained against Peterborough. So Chester will employ a 4-5-1 formation with Richardson, the main striker, but behind him will be, of course, Ryan Lowe. Tom Curtis returns to the lineup this afternoon following his suspension, but Greg Lundell is still out injured with this thigh problem, which doesn't seem to be going away. Hopefully he'll be back within a couple of weeks' time, though, for the Christmas fixtures, and in particular, the Wrexham game. Nottingham Forest, well, David Johnson, as mentioned, does return to the side following his back problem. Uh, whilst Forest are missing the services of captain Tim Brecken and Jack Lester, both of whom were sent off at Huddersfield last week. Plenty of quality in the side with former Manchester United player John Curtis and also captain Danny Cullip. Gareth Taylor is also a player who can net as well as defend, and Chester will be well wary of that today. Come on, everyone, it's a great atmosphere. The ground is for letting you. The kids kill. Blue White Army. Let me have your lights. Come on. So we're almost ready to go as the side swap ends. Chester will be attacking the home end in this first half. Scott McNiven will be hoping for another solid performance. It is going to be a tough task for Chester City today. It's Curtis and Justin Walker who get us underway. Good following from Nottingham. They've travelled to Chester this afternoon. Certainly one that's been uh, talked about for weeks since the second round draw was made. And the good news for Chester City this week is that Keith Curl does remain as manager of Chester following Neil Warnock's decision to stay at Championship Sheffield United. Great news for the Blues fans. Hopefully Keith will be able to inspire his side to a famous win today, but Nottingham Forest will ensure have other ideas. Just to have possession there, and they throw in. Niven looking just further down the line. Curtis lofts it up towards the Forest penalty area. Gerard comes out to clear whilst Ryan Lowe is homing in on it. Ryan Lowe with 10 goals so far this season. Last time the two sides met was when Chester were playing Forest in the League Cup and that one ended 10-0 to Forest on aggregate. We're hoping there's nothing like that today. Plenty of fans before the game saying that the first goal is ultra important today. Of course Forest have this dreadful away record, they've only won once on their travels all season so far. And that was away at Weymouth in the FA Cup first round replay to set up this match. So plenty of hope there for City. And Chester have got a reasonably good home form of late. And they are, of course, unbeaten in the last four games. So Chester have a lot riding with them. Carl Regan then with a throw for City. Again nodded back. Gary Megson under pressure at the City ground recently. His home form seems to be okay though. It's the away form as mentioned that is the problem. 
Richardson oh, just failed to connect with Ryan Lowe there. Plenty of support from the City fans. Forrest then the throw midway inside the City half just by the main stand. And that's going to roll harmlessly out of play for a Blues goal kick. Keith Curl sitting up there at the uh, top of the stand. Surveying the view from the, uh, the top rather than down on the touchline. Has been his trend of late and he normally appears for the second half down on the touchline at some stage. Chairman Steve Bourne will also obviously be hoping for progression to the third round just for doing that. Chester will net a further £24,000 to add to the 16000 already made from the cup run. And of course a plum draw could be in the offing for the Blues if they can squeeze past Forrest today. So much up for grabs on second round eight. Drummond with a header. Here's low going through. Brought down referee sees the linesman's flag and it will be a free kick to Chester just right by the uh, Forest penalty area. So a bit of danger here for Forest as John Thompson was the man penalised for the foul on low. So an opportunity then for Ben Davis. Hasn't scored a free kick since the uh, the Wolves game. What a goal that was that night. He's going to swing this one in though. Looks for the heads. And those big claims of a push, I think possibly on Richardson inside that penalty area, but most of the claims coming from behind the goal. To see it again here is the well it is on Artel, it's it's Wes Morgan who Looked to have fouled Artel, but the referee gives nothing other than a throw-in. And this time, Drummond's header goes behind for the goal kick, but early Blues pressure on the Forest goal. Great to see the, uh, the Diva filled again. It is a little bit restricted with the uh, the safety certificate issue. Heisman's flag is up, so Chester will have the free kick. McKenzie will uh, take this midway inside his own half again. Goes over to the left, but Ben Davis can't reach that one, and here's Johnson. Searching ball out to the right hand side for Taylor to latch onto. He's got Nicky Southall in uh, support, and here is Southall who gets the low ball in. Bit of danger at the uh, edge of the penalty area, but Walker plays a, a ball towards Davis, intercepted by Morgan. Morgan still going. Was he impeded at the edge of the penalty area? Martel clears to Davis. Good work by Martel. coming at City again. Taylor though dispossessed this time and his Drummond has improved so much this season. Here's James Perch. And the cross is deflected away for a corner by Artel. Maybe a little bit needless that one from Artel. Didn't get the direction right at all on the header. So a bit of defending for Sully to do. Southall to take the corner kick. Near post headed by Curtis. Played square, an opportunity here. Eugene Bob is dispossessed and Drummond again. Important challenge now, a foul this time on Ryan Lowe. Referee happy to play on. 
And now the challenges are flying in as Carl Regan sends a great ball towards Richardson on the right side. Marcus Richardson, Curtis in front of him. Richardson still going. Gets the ball over. And Gerard scoops it up and now the referee is unhappy with the challenge from Davis on the keeper. Defender Cullip was arguing for Ben Davis' cause there, really, saying nothing happened. So, just a talking to from the uh, referee. Mr Mason deciding that no yellow card was needed. Half decent start then here at the Divas. Ryan Lowe receives treatment for the challenge from behind. Will have to leave the field of play for the uh, as he's received treatment. Just got caught from behind there. Not the best of challenges. Now Taylor trying to burst through. He is well held by McNiven who wins the ball well. Drummond clears a late challenge on Drummond there it seemed, but the referee happy for play to go on again. Or is he? No, he's pulled it back on it. Free kick has been given after all, so McNiven will take the throw. He thought it should have been a free kick. Drummond as Richardson looks to. Well, this one has won a free kick, though. Free kick for Ben Davis again. It's a high one this time. The heads go up. Over the way towards the edge of the area. Here's Walker. Who's come back into the side recently. Low. Keeps the ball in play. Extra bit of support in there. Tries to go past. Oh, not the best. Close. Never seen a shot coming from Niven, but not troubling Joe on that one. Not trouble for these signs on the top of the stand behind the goal. Well, Forest are, of course, without the cup tied Nathan Tyson today. He signed off from Rick and Wanderers on loan. And that is because he's about to sign in January permanently for Forest. Chester would be glad not to have uh, been facing him again today. Although they did keep him quiet in the match at Wickham in that fantastic 3 3 draw. He was actually replaced at half time in that match, but still glad not to see him here today. Here's Eugene Bopp, who... Uh, throw kick over, is it? No, throw in. Johnson will take. Here's Southall. Seems to lose possession. Puts going deep towards Taylor, but bounces away for the goal kick to City. Regan, we're hoping to uh, help keep the city defence, keep another clean sheet today. Did a good job last Saturday, even though they didn't get a clean sheet against Peterborough, the uh, defence handled anything that they threw up and made most of the time, so a bit more hope that the defence is getting itself together after a few leak goals this season. a chance for Southall if he can keep it in, gets the cross behind, oh! Johnson missed it inside the six yard box and Regan will clear. And I 
that's the closest any of the two sides have come to opening the deadlock here. Martel saying that it should have been uh, Niven's ball. Well, <laughs> Meanwhile, Danny Cullard receiving treatment for Forrest, the ex Sheffield United and Brighton player. Chris McKenzie almost caught in two, man, in, uh, two minds there as the ball came out towards Southall on the right side of the uh, penalty area. Scoot back in, took a deflection actually off uh, McNiven. And that deflection probably stopped David Johnson putting the ball in the back of the net. So a little chit chat trying to sort things out. Good to see the players talking. Ball control by Drummond allowing Forrest to reclaim possession with a throw in now. Keith Curl's actually back on the touchline, so he mustn't have been too impressed from the uh, the top of the stand there. Or maybe he just wants to feel part of it on the bench. Just looking at the bench for Chester today. Phil Bolland, as mentioned previously, is on there. As too is Stephen Vaughan, Craig Dove, and Abdul El Kalti, who is uh, quite a useful player when he comes on his sub. A lot of pace. Happy feet, as he seems to be called at the moment. And also Ryan Brookfield, the substitute goalkeeper. Hopefully, nothing will happen today to Chris McKenzie, but Chester not taking any chances. Good ball played for Richardson. Gerrard's out quickly. Claims of handball, not, they are given. Maybe a throw in though, rather than a free kick. Substitution for Nottingham Forest coming on. Number 35, Jean-Paul Pippers, coming on for number 22, captain Danny Cullick. Well, this is a, a plus for Chester City, certainly. Defender and captain Danny Cullick is retiring through injury today. A big bonus, really, for City. A little bit of advice for substitute Jean-Paul Pittman. He made his debut in the LDV Vans trophy defeat at home to Woking. So let's hope that's a lucky omen as far as the Cups are concerned. But Cullip now having to leave the field of play, and he is a big player for Forrest. Can Chester exploit it? Here's Walker. Nice little flick. Claim of handball again. Not given this time. And now Chester could be away. Oh, Gerard with a. A poor clearance is still there for City, but Gerard's back in his goal now, and the clearance is made anyway. But the Chester fans warming themselves up again. Bit of head tennis. City win it back. Regan sending it forward. The chase is on again. Here's Low, right hand side. Can he get ahead of the defender? He can. Must defeat John Thompson still, he's held back and nothing given, says the linesman. Low look to be obstructed by the corner flag. Chester's leading goal scorer. Scored an absolute peach of a goal against Peterborough last Saturday. Now we'd love him to repeat that one today. Coming up towards the 20 minute mark here. Still goalless in the FA Cup second round game, but here is Marcus Richardson, right hand side. Takes the ball out of play. Boris throw. Just having a game with Drummond. They're seeing a lot of the ball at the moment, City. Walker has McNiven available on his left, and that's where he goes. 
Ryan Lowe shouting for the ball, but he goes long distance to a Richardson, but Gerard's there again. I think it was just behind Richardson when he'd made his run. Nice little flick header from Artel to Chris McKenzie. Artel has Johnson in his pocket there at the moment. Another searching ball for Richardson to try and latch on to, and that's a safety first clearance from John Thompson. Opportunity though for Regan to launch one into the penalty area, maybe. Falls now to Lowe. The claim of handball. Corner whipped it, cross whipped in, and just evaded the feet of Justin Walker. Ball still in. Here's Curtis. Wants to go wide, nobody there at the moment, but here it's flicked back now to Regan. Chester forced back a little bit with that awkward touch. Uh, Forrest have the ball again. Oh, and another late challenge, a crunching challenge, that one. Ben Davis back on his feet, but you can hear that challenge. I think it was... Uh, possibly Perch went in there on Davis, but fortunately Chester's... Blonde-haired man is uh, back to his feet. Now opportunity for Richardson. Oh, it's Richardson, he has the shot! Oh, he's put it wide! And I don't think there was a flag for offside. And that has to go down as a bad miss. Well, it seems to bounce up in that penalty area. The linesman doesn't have his flag up for offside, so... Golden opportunity there as Artel seemed to get a little touch in it. Fell very kindly as the defender totally missed it, but Richardson scooped it just wide of the upright. Well, that could have been the, uh, the first goal of the afternoon. And Richardson, who has got a couple of goals this season, could have had another. Now Davis looking to start another move off, but poor touch on that one. And there's an even worse ball, an even worse touch. Forest fans getting a bit impatient with their uh, side not being able to put much together. Pittman intercepted again by Walker to Drummond. Those two doing all right in midfield at the moment. Over it goes to Regan on the right into the Forest half again. Looks for Lowe. Another challenge from behind on Ryan Lowe, but this time. He's back to his feet. Here's Johnson. Pittman on the left now for another good challenge. Here's Demek this time. Pittman left on the floor, but the referee giving nothing. But Chester taking a long time to clear the lines and almost caused them a problem. Davis, he's controlled by McNiven, but a little simple lofted ball towards Davis, tough challenge on him, from Perch again. Martel. Ball was searching out for uh, Davis, but... Perch just managed to nod it out for a throw-in. Certainly Chester having the better of this first half, but it'd be great to have a goal whilst they're on top. Here's Walker, again picking out Regan on the right. Here's Re uh, Walker, the former Exeter player. Not the ball that uh, Lowe was looking for on that occasion from Drummond. Header on, 
Problems here for Demek. He's got to watch out. And he does well in the end against Pittman. Perch now waiting to take the throw. The player who made his debut against Wigan last year, having come through the successful Nottingham Forest Academy. Well, that's an interesting ball for Marcus Richardson to chase. He won't thank his teammate for that one. But it is a throw in now. As Taylor has reverted back to defence. So. Another bit of uh, relief for Chester there, maybe. Clearance only comes out as far as Walker. Again, uses Regan. Here's the former Everton player. Dips in for Richardson, does it? No, cleared away. And in fact, the referee has given the free kick for offside. Ball did take a deflection. And it seemed to be heading for Richardson's feet. It's time for the Barmy Army song. There's Pittman. Again, well washed away from it. Plains of offside there, the flag has gone up belatedly. Official getting a lot of stick from the Forest fans, but Mr. Taylor deciding that it was offside in the end. Well, that free kick wasted by Regan. Taylor sends a looping ball forward, but Pittman is well off the pace. Mackenzie comes out to clear. on the throw, I think he has, yep, did well there, the ball was well spinning out of play but he managed to divert it off Perch for the Chester throw, Walker, here's Low. Lowe was impeded so it'll be another free kick, about 30 yards or so out from goal, copy of Ben Davis won this one, Trying to get a ball together. Now, can he do what he did to Wolves? Well, will Curtis have a, a shot at this one? You'd think it would be Davis with the run. Here it comes, it's laid off, in fact. Shot coming in! Didn't quite come off the shot. Low still going though. This time Thompson clears. Now Pittman. Dangerous run from Pittman here. Regan's coming back. And again does a great job in marshalling him. But Johnson is on side. But not quick enough to keep the ball from going out of play for a Chester City throw in. Uh, Chester City goal kick rather. It's been a tough few years for Johnson since his £3 million move from Ipswich in uh, 2001. He scored 29 goals in his first season at Forest before breaking his leg and never really rec recovered since. And he's been having injections in his back to try and get rid of the sciatic problem, which seems to be refusing to go away, but he is back today having played in the reserves game the other night for Forest. but not having much of an impression so far on uh, this FA Cup game. Great performance so far from City, just needing a goal at the moment. A lot better than the uh, first round performance against Folkestone and Victor. Lincoln's flag is up for a free kick. <laughs> 
some of the Chester fans behind the lines and were arm waving there as if to say, What are you putting your flag up for? Man? But he gives the free kick to Chester City. So, an unexpected opportunity here. Guess who to take the free kick? Oof, diving header away. Bartel with Walker. Guided header, and it's going to be Walker to pick up the loose ball. Seeing plenty of it is Walker as well. He's doing all right today. Niven, short ball to Curtis. He's going to get it back though, and it's not the best of balls back to him as Gary Holt comes sliding in. No try to get past Perch, but couldn't do so. And that is going to rebound for a Chester corner, so an unexpected opportunity again for City. They're getting the rub of the green at the moment. It's going to come back to Ben Davis, who sends a crossover. It's gone deep. And Artel can't get anything on it as it rolls away for the forest throw. Here's Drummond. Can we get there ahead of the Forest player? No, we can't. It's another free kick to Chesterwell. Gary Megson quite animated on the side there. Not happy with the decision of Forest, but it is a Chester free kick just inside the Blues half. Regan with a low ball down the line to low, but it's cleared away. Opportunity now for Forrest as they come forward. Here's Southall, he's got two men to beat. It goes for the long range shot, takes deflection. And a header from Pittman into the arms of McKenzie. And Chester breathed a sigh of relief from that one. Looked to be two on two for the moment. Another great clearance by McKenzie. And he's renowned for that. But this time Chester get lucky again and Davis sends the ball down the line for Richardson to chase the chase is on here but Gerard is there first Ryan Lowe not pulled back says the referee here's Thompson and this time the ball sails through to Chester's number one he's coming for a bit of stick recently but uh, Certainly against Peterborough, pulled off a brilliant couple of saves to uh, keep Chester in the game early on. And Morgan clears the Forest up Pittman, that's a late challenge on Pittman this time and that could be a booking. In fact the referee happy to play on his halt. Curtis. Johnson comes inside, tries to play it through to Pittman, but that one doesn't come off either. Well, it wasn't long ago that Nottingham Forest were gracing the Premiership. They actually scored the first Premiership goal from a young man called Teddy Sheringham against Liverpool. But those days are long gone now for Forest as they aim to get out of the League One set up into the Championship, but not setting the uh, league on fire at the moment because of this dodgy away form mainly. Chester Forson, Forest on the back foot as well, and that is a miscue ball. Does reach Perch. And another misplaced pass, well. Forest fans not getting too uh, carried away with this one. Here's Artel. 
Walker. Walker looks for Regan again, finds him. Buckler didn't quite come off, but here's Curtis who sends the ball off to the left side. Great ball from Curtis to Davis. Now, can Davis go past Perch? He's got McNiven on the overlap. Here is McNiven. Oh, and he just tried to dink it past the defender, but it didn't quite work. Johnson wins the throw off Artel. Quick throw from the former Ipswich player. Oh, Mackenzie has conceded the corner. It wasn't the best of uh, back passes by Demek to uh, Mackenzie, but it skewed off Mackenzie's boot. And it's pressure on Chester now as Forrest come forward for the corner. Plenty have come up from uh, Nottingham to the Diva Stadium, probably their first visit to the Diva. It's going to be Southall to take the corner kick, swings it over. Header at the near post from Martel, I think that was, or Curtis. Here's Holt, who was playing in the Premiership last season for Norwich City. Oh, a bit of an elbow there, maybe. Morgan. Oh, nice little back flick from Regan. And now Richardson on the chase. Richardson holds it up, edging that penalty area. Here's Ryan Lowe. Ryan Lowe with a shot. It's in the post. It's gone back to Lowe again. He's broke down. It's a penalty, is it? It has to be. The penalty is it. Oh, and a red card is given as well. And Gary Holt, just so I say, who's playing in the Premiership last season, well, his days playing today is over. He's been sent off for the challenge on Ryan Lowe. The referee says I have no option. So, a great chance for City now. Ryan Lowe with a shot first of all, it rebounded off the post and he made his way through still for the rebound. Clipped the post, came straight back out and there is Lowe, he didn't hit it first time, I don't know why, maybe tried to control it but the extra touch allowed Holt to come back but Holt made a mess of his challenge. And it's Ryan Lowe who is set to take the penalty for Chester. Well, what a great opportunity this is for City. It's Ryan Lowe waiting to take it. Paul Gerrard is having a word with the linesman. He's not happy. So Ryan Lowe in front of the home end to put Chester City a goal up in the FA Cup second round match here. Here he comes. No mistake from Ryan Lowe. It's Chester City 1, Nottingham Forest 0. Now we have five or six minutes to go to half-time. Chester have got a deserved lead here at the Diva Stadium. Perfectly placed by Ryan Lowe. Well, the place is buzzing now, all right. Ryan Lowe celebrating his goal. Everybody, let's hear it. First goal for Chester City, number 10, Ryan Lowe! It is 11th of the season and it couldn't have come at a better time. And the Chester City fans now going berserk behind the goal. Nottingham Forest fans aren't. So, City lead with a few minutes to go to half time. Question now is can they hold out to half time or will Forest come out of the traps now? It's been pretty much one way traffic, but there hasn't been much to shout about goal, um, goal threat wise with shots. The only one being a header from Pittman, really, for Forrest, but Marcus Richardson went close, but Ryan Lowe hitting the post, followed up his own rebound and was fouled, and Gary Holt saw red, and he becomes the third Nottingham Forest player to see red card in the last two, two games.
Of course, they did receive two reds at uh, Huddersfield in the two on defeat last week. Perch, though, doesn't roll Cowley for him, and Chester have the throw. Not enough Forest fans, not happy at all. Said he'd continue then with the throw. Curtis just hammers it forward all the way down to Gerard. It's back to Gerard again as Chester forced Forrest back once again. Here's Morgan now. Perch. Down the line, trouble here, Southall, he can't keep his feet, and it's Demek who clears the danger. Another aimless ball, and Chester picking up possession easily here. Regan sends it skywards towards Richardson, can Richardson win it? He does get his head on it, but there's no follow-up from Walker and this time Forrest have the throw in are oh, you Wrexham in disguise as the uh, the chant from the home end City fans will be majorly, majorly happy if this remains a scoreline, not just at half time but at the end of the match. Long time to go yet though, Southall couldn't get to it and Artel clears. Perch. Game with the ball, but Chester are doing a great job forcing their opponents back here. They've not allowed Forrest to get into the stride at all. Great credit to the men in blue and white. Southall again. Has to turn back to Perch. On this right side, looking to start a move, but again, Chester getting in there with the challenges as it matters. No offside given against Pittman. Here's Curtis. Remember, it's League Two Chester beating League One Nottingham Forest here. Here's Perch, but it's too late, it's gone out of play. And Chester will have the goal kick. Well, Gary Megson must be feeling the pressure right now. There'll be questions as to whether he'll be in the job come tomorrow morning if Chester managed to keep hold of this 1-0 lead. Remember, the only away win Nottingham Forest have managed this season has been their away win in the first round replay at Weymouth, non-league Weymouth. trying to start a move but they're struggling against the resolute Chester rear guard but Martel gives the ball away on this occasion and as Johnson tries to do something down the left side Regan catches up with him so another two minutes to go to half time as the ball takes deflection off Taylor off uh, Davis rather but this time the rebound is kind and Mackenzie will be happy to take his time before delivering the goal kick. Well, last time Chester lost at home was the Rochdale game back in October. 
And that was a cracker as well. But at the moment, Chester staying on top and in front, the main thing. Keith Kill still dishing out the instructions by the Chester dugout there. Certainly has given the side a lift with the news that he wasn't leaving for Portsmouth. Not just the side, but the fans as well. This opportunity maybe, but Southall couldn't reach it before McKenzie. Here's Thompson. Blues again forcing those red shirts back. This is great stuff to see. Forest fans getting extremely impatient. And they've given the ball away again. Falls tally for the Forest this time though as Morgan tries to send the ball through the middle to either Johnson or Pittman. But again, it comes back to a silly shirt. And McKenzie. Goes out of play, poor kick from McKenzie this time. Walker, ball from Walker over the top, but far too much purchase on that for Richardson. Whistles now for the half-time whistle. And there it is, a great first half, great performance by Chester City, Nottingham Forest booed off the pitch by their own supporters. Well, the difference between the two sides is Ryan Lowe's 40th minute penalty after Gary Holt was sent off, but Chester lead 1-0 at the break.